What is going on, DGens? It's your boy Josh back with another episode of DGen Theory Poker. Uh, in this episode, we're playing some 1 2, buying in for $300, and we get lots of crazy hands, so you won't want to miss out. See y'all on the felt. The first couple hands at this table, there's some limpers, so you know we had to punish them, and we raised them off their hands pre flop, and everyone's getting all pissed at the new guy, me, coming in and stealing all their blinds. But you know what? Fuck that. I don't want to play small ass pots with weak hands or against a bunch of random cards, so that's how it's gonna be. Right after I raised and everyone folded pre, we get to this hand, where there's an under the gun limp, and I raised to 12, of course, with ace king of spades, and get two calls. I call. Sure. Uh oh, uh oh, you're getting called now, they said. Alright. That's it, we can't let you do call. Oh yeah, both of them call. These guys. I'm telling you, who invites you? Make it, Make it reasonable. Make it reasonable. Make it reasonable. Make it negotiable. As you can tell, they're mad I'm raising, so they think they gotta defend with their trashy limbed hands. But that's exactly what we want, because what they don't know is I've got a monster. Flop comes 8-3 deuce with one spade. Under the gun leads for 20, and I call with two overs and backdoor spades, and the small blind folds. Our backdoor draw levels up to a real draw when the two of spades comes on the turn. Our opponent now continues for 30, and we call, and the river, Gives us a flush, of course. What else did you think would happen? Our opponent bets 60 now, and of course we're gonna raise. We don't have the nuts, but we can get called by a lot worse, and we look like a maniac to these kids, remember? Our opponent grins at me and just folds. Clearly he was just trying to rep the sharp board with low cards and wanted to stand up to me bullying. But that's what you get, kids. Don't, don't stand up to your bullies. A couple hands later, we have ace jack of spades in the cutoff. An early position player opens to 15, and he doesn't have much behind, so I just call. The big blind also calls, and the flop comes ace jack jack. Why wouldn't it? They both check to me, and I check back for deception, and because I pretty much own the entire board. The turn is a king, and this time the big blind bets 25. The other player calls, and now I decide to raise small, just to $75, hoping to get both of them to call. The big blind calls before I even get my chips out there, but the short stack player folds. My opponent checks in the dark, and the river comes in 8. I now bet big to try and make up for missed value on the flop, and to make it seem like I could be bluffing. I size up to $200. My opponent looks really uncomfortable, so I'm thinking my plan could work. He counts out chips for a call, tells me it'll be a cooler if I beat him, and then he starts counting out all of his chips, looking like he might go all in. Eventually, he flips over his hand and shows a jack, so I'm just praying he can call, and honestly, I don't know how he hasn't already. And then he folds his hand. Looks like we bet a little too much into this player, unfortunately. In this next hand, the low jack opens to 12, and I look down at ace king. I 3 bet to 35, and he calls. The flop comes 3, 10, 4, and he checks. Pretty trash board, so I C bet to 15 just to try and see if he folds. He calls, though, and the turn comes a 9. He checks to me, and I check now, thinking our ace high could be good sometimes at showdown. We don't need to worry about that, though, when the river comes a king. Our opponent, however, bets 150 now. A few draws missed, and I look like I could have a trash hand. Also, this is the player from the first hand who seemed to have bluffed three streets into me. So I just call the overbet, and he's got queen jack for the straight, of course. Looks like we got a little Jedi mind game reverse psychology thing going on with this player. The very next hand, the same player from last hand opens to 15 over a limp. I call in late position trying to get our money back with pocket sixes, and the limper calls as well. Flop comes 9, 4, 10, and we all check through. The turn is a 9, and now he bets 15. I don't think he has a lot of 10s here, since he would have bet the flop, and I'm suspicious he is just delay C betting, so I call with my pair. The limper folds, and now the river is an 8, and he bets 50. This time I'm almost positive he's bluffing because he just value bet me last hand and now I think that he thinks that I would think that he's telling the truth and I'll just fold. 
I know, expert poker strategy here. But anyway, I'm not folding. I call and he mucks his card. So we don't even have to show that we just owned his soul calling down lightly. In this one, we've got two aces, baby. Under the gun limps, and then as the next players are folding, one of them exposes a queen. Another player limps, and if you're new here, you'll learn that we don't like limpers very much. I raised to 15 punishing the limpers, and they both call. The flop comes queen, queen, jack, and with one of the exposed queens gone, I now feel full liberty to bet. I also have played with the under the gun player before, and know he's aggressive and will for sure raise all his jacks here and exploit the fact that there's just one queen left. Right on cue, he just goes all in. The other players fold and we snap call and he does not look happy, so I flip over my hand. The run out comes two kings and he shows he had exactly what we thought he had, and we win. A couple hands later, we've got queen king in the small blind. There's an under the gun straddle for $10 and three limps. You already know what's coming here. I raise it up to 55. This move is so nice because if they fold, I pick up all the $10 straddles without even seeing a flop. But if they call, we're likely dominating their range and they're gonna have a bunch of like queen 10, king 10, queen jack type hands that we destroy uh, since they didn't raise themselves. So I'm fine with either. The straddler calls, he still can have anything since it's his first action and the button calls as well. Three ways to a flop, which we smash as it comes 10 queen king. I continue betting for 65, expecting to get action from a lot of hands like pairs, worst two pairs, straight or flush draws. The button is the only caller now. The turn is a pretty bad card in the jack, bringing four to a straight. So I check for pot control and my opponent bets 125. I almost fold, but my hand's just too good to do so here. So I just call hoping to improve or fold to a river bet. The river is the 10 of diamonds, now bringing even more hands that beat me, and we both check, and he flips over ace-queen for the turn straight, so we lose. We're in the big blind and look down at ace-king of spades. The low jack player raises to 10, and he's in trouble. It folds back to me, and I re-raise to 40 now. Back to him, and he goes all in for about 120, and I snap call. Let's go. Ready guys? Alright, here we go. Yeah, ace high. Skin good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could have won that pot with my trailer. <laughs> This next hand, we don't have any footage because one of the players at the table didn't want to be filmed, unfortunately. So we're waiting for a seat change and still playing, but I had to share this one with y'all still. We have six, seven of diamonds in the cutoff and there's four limps to me. So I go big to 25 and five people call. Okay. Anyway, the flop comes queen three, five and the under the gun player bets 25. It's such a small bet and these players are playing so passively that I just say fuck it and call, hoping to gamble and hit my straight, as is the D-Gen theory play. The button and big blind call again after me, and you wouldn't believe it, the turn is an actual four. It gets better though. The under the gun player continues for 25 again, and now I raise to 100 with my straight. The button then goes all in for 128, the big blind calls, and then the under the gun player goes all in himself for just 132. Myself and the big blind put the extra $4 in and the river comes at three. The last opponent that isn't all in in the big blind checks to me and I immediately move all in for 325 and he covers me. He's immediately upset with the situation and starts cussing to himself. I automatically know from this that I have the best hand, so I just get to sit back and enjoy this player shitting himself over the tough position I put him in. I obviously have it here because there's no point bluffing into an empty side pot, but this player doesn't seem to know that, and I'm just praying he convinces himself to call. Ultimately, he folds though, saying he had a queen and wishes he bet instead. Yeah, I wish he did too, bro. I flip over my straight, and the under the gun player has the same hand and we chop. 
I still win about $200 uh, since there was a bunch of action from other players, so I'll take it. We move tables so we can start filming again and get into this hand where we have king, queen, and the hijack. The low jack opens to 20, which is a massive raise size for 1-2, so we just call and the cutoff calls behind us. The flop comes jack, two, king, giving us top pair, and the preflop raiser continues for 40. He can have plenty of flush draws or straight draws on this flop, which we beat, so with top pair, we're not folding. We call and the other player folds. The turn is a six and he checks. I feel pretty confident now with my top pair since he checked. And there's plenty of worse hands like a jack or draws that I want to charge. So I bet 75 and he calls. The river is a nine and he checks. We check back and we win against ace jack. There's a $10 straddle and one call, so per usual, I punish them raising to 40 with queen 10. Probably a bit loose, but I'm feeling myself, fuck you. Everyone folds to them and they both call. The flop comes jack 7-7 seven, seven, and they check to me. I see bet for 40 and just the under the gun straddle calls. The turn now comes a king, giving myself an open-ended straight draw and my opponent checks. Since my hand now improved, I'm going to continue bluffing, and also this king hits my range a lot more than his, since I raised big pre. I look at his stack and see he has about 220, just over the size of the pot. I think the best play here is just to go all in, and put all his jacks or worst pairs in a tough spot. I don't think he has a 7, so I shove, and he folds. So we win a couple hundred with just queen high. This hand we're playing a $5 double board hold'em bomb pot. There's nine players and the flop comes jack seven eight and five four king. And we look down at a nice hold'em hand, ace king suited. It checks to me and I bet 20 and four players call. The turn is a king up top and a five on the bottom. So now we have a top pair top kicker on both boards. We're likely good on one board, but who knows in these things. I bet 60 to continue to thin the field and two players call. The river is a four and a nine. Just in case we're beat by both these players, I check this time and the cutoff now bets 10. <laughs> the other player actually folds to this bet, so I guess they were just drawing and I call and we actually scoop the entire pot when we see that they were playing top pair with a worse kicker. For the last hand of the night, we're playing 1-2-6 with a $6 straddle, and I look down at pocket jacks on the button. There's four calls to me, so I raise it up to 40, and the straddler folds, but everybody else in the small blind all call. The flop comes king-king-6 with two diamonds, it checks all the way to me, and with this many people in the hand, there's no way I'm betting into this board without a king. So I check. The turn is another horrible card and the queen of diamonds now bringing in the front door flush and another card over my pair. And everyone checks again. The river is now an eight and the small blind bets like 95 and Everybody folds, and I fold as well. It literally couldn't have been a worse board for us. And that's going to do it for the night. All right, y'all. That's going to do it for that one. Um, in for the game for 300, out for... 1160. So yeah, profit 860. Nice little profit. Um, just making our money back from the two five streets um that big loss we took in the last episode um and yeah this one went uh pretty well like honestly everything really went our way we didn't lose too many pots played pretty great uh got good value from people um you know love to see it um if y'all made it this far thanks so much uh would love it if you could throw me a like and a subscribe and i'll see you in the next one peace